Well, that was fucking awkward. Welcome to another episode of the Echelon Broadcast. My name is Mark. I am with Echelon Media. And today we're going to talk about evergreen content. What is evergreen content? Well, let me just check a few things real quick just to make sure that we're on track. Okay, got it. So evergreen content. The reason why I want to focus on this is because typically a topic of conversation that always comes up around creating videos for content marketing is this idea of virality because you want to be timely and you want to be relevant to the moment. And while that may be something that you could strive for when it comes to creating video, it's not something I would necessarily recommend you try and do simply because you're going to be competing for your customer's attention and trying to vie for their attention in the middle of a of a media scandal or some sort of attention storm that comes up around a particular topic, whether it's, let's say, um, let's take in the YouTube space, Logan Paul going to the suicide forest in Japan or uh, any number of things that the um, Kardashians or the Jenners could be up to in the moment. Unless this sort of stuff is relevant to your particular niche, your specific business, I really wouldn't recommend diving into it too much simply because it's going to be a constant chase to try and keep up with the Joneses to make this happen. I say that because though it's relevant and hot and a big flash in the pan right now in this moment, in about two to three weeks, maybe even less than that, uh, it's not going to be all that relevant. And you'll have content that's taking up space in your website or your YouTube page or maybe your Facebook uh, videos library. But you'll have spent the time and energy and effort to make that happen when you could have created something called evergreen content. Now, it's, it's kind of tricky because, of course, you want to stay relevant. Of course, you want to stay in the uh, – this is – the thing about marketing and content creation, a lot of it has to do with being in front of the eyeballs of the people that want to see your stuff. Understand that you can't control that all the time. You want to do your best to keep people's attention. Um, but you want to hold their attention in a way that's more specific to what it is that they're looking for in terms of what you can provide for them, the type of value that you create in the world that they can best use. And by that I mean, are you providing them with information that they can actually apply for their particular task? And that's what most people turn to you for. So if you're a plumber, granted you can talk about, God, what's something scandalous in the plumber world? I mean, I don't really know anything. Uh, oh, I mean, somewhat unrelated, but related. Um, famous plumber. Famous plumber fights dragon in a dark alley in order to rescue his girlfriend. And you can spin that off into some silly thing about um, the Mario Brothers or whatever. Uh, I know this seems kind of ridiculous, but it's something that you can possibly spin if, say, there's a new premiere for a Mario Brothers game. And you can kind of be funny. And if it's relevant to your personality, it might work. But... If you talk about how people can prevent getting their drains clogged or getting their sinks clogged by making sure that they're running hot water whenever they throw some grease down the sink, that's probably a lot more relevant and something that people can look for always, especially if you're trying to leverage YouTube and it being the second, uh, second most used search engine in the world. So when people are looking for how to keep a uh, sink from getting clogged when throwing out grease, that is going to be one of the things that comes up in the, uh, the, the, the search provides for people when they look for it. And if your name happens to be attached to that content, all the better. So that's what you want to strive for rather than trying to create some virality around something that's hot and brand new. Water break. I'm 
I'm really bad at drinking water. So I'm going to need your help. I want you to keep tally of the number of times I drink water in a video. And if I dip down below a certain number of water, let's say I want to try and shoot for at least three glasses of water per video, then we're good to go. Otherwise, I want you to go ahead and uh, let me know. Just leave a comment down below and let me know that I need to drink more water. Anyway, evergreen content. The reason you want to create evergreen content and focus on generating that is because the catalog of videos that you have in your YouTube or your video library for your Facebook is going to be the stu- is going to be the stuff that pops up for people whenever they go searching for this kind of information. Granted, if you consider the platforms, most people are not going to be looking for that stuff on Facebook. Whenever they're on Facebook, oftentimes they're looking for stuff that's going to entertain them, stuff that's going to catch their attention, that's going to be around politics or the most relevant things. But on occasion, if you happen to be the guy that's feeding information to people that's actually relevant and useful and a little bit eye-catching as well, that can be where you can sort of bridge the two worlds. So for example, the intro to this video, I did something a little bit ridiculous and off the wall to catch your attention and... Maybe as people are scrolling through their feed, they'll see some picture of some guy looking at some other guy wearing nothing but underwear dancing around. And so that may get someone's attention enough to get them to come and look at your video. So if you can use a little bit of your personality, whatever that may be, that is sort of got some comedic tendencies, by all means, take advantage of that. Because that is going to be what catches people's attention and ultimately filters out the people or filters in the type of people you want to work with because they can appreciate your ridiculous type of humor. That's bad in the sense that it does filter out people that don't want anything to do with you because maybe you're a little too off the wall and ridiculous. But it's great because it'll only ever draw in people that are going to be an absolute fit and a match for your personality as well as being able to work with people over the long run. And that's even more important is having consistency of customers over a long period of time. Evergreen content. So how do you find evergreen content? One of the ways that I always recommend that you can create evergreen content is looking through your list of FAQs. The most common questions that you get from your customers or use that list as a place to start creating content around the most common concerns that people have. That's one place that you can start. Another way that you can create evergreen content for your business is to go in and create testimonials because prospects and potential customers will always appreciate someone else's perspective besides yours about the quality of your service or your product. Yet another and somewhat tricky source of material that you could provide for your customers is actually teaching them a few of the skills that you have, let's say around plumbing. If you teach people, like I mentioned earlier, how to prevent their sinks from getting clogged by making sure that they run hot water whenever they're throwing grease down the drain. If you create content around those little tidbits, those little tips and tricks, or if you're a plumber and you empower people how to do some small repairs, or let's say you're a lawyer and you teach people how to go through and fill out certain forms and how to submit them, those are sources of material that you can always pull from because these are going to be a few of the things that most people are going to be concerned about whenever they come to you for your service. And I know this can be a sore spot for some business owners because they feel like they're losing business because now they're empowering people. But what better way to create trust in the people who are going to come and work with you by actually providing them a means to help themselves. And ultimately, Ultimately, you'll find that not everyone necessarily has the time, money, or energy to actually go in and say, do those repairs. And for some people, if we're talking about a lawyer, if if you provide a certain service, it may just be easier for people to turn to you to do that service for them rather than going in and doing it for themselves because it may just be too complicated. Anywho, I hope this was helpful to you. Go ahead and give it a like or a thumbs up if you thought it was informative, funny, or ridiculous, any number of those things. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, or concerns, go ahead and leave those in the comments section. And if you enjoy this and you want to see more ridiculous but informative videos just like this, go ahead and either subscribe if you're on YouTube or like the Ashlan Media Facebook page so that you'll always know when a new video comes up. And I try to produce these once a week. Once again, my name is Mark with Echelon Media, helping you elevate your story. I'll see you next time. Peace.